we've got the trailer back from the metal shop and I'm really happy with the results. As you can see, we now have a winch post and a new jockey wheel. Mike, the guy who did the metal work, did such a good job. He made it look easy, to be honest. I was a little bit concerned of how complex it was cutting into the old box section. We've done it in two hours. So next up, we need to prep the trailer for powder coating. Now they will sandblast it and acid dip it. However, there are some particularly rusty bits on this trailer. So I'm gonna work on those bits just because I'm a perfectionist. I'm gonna make sure what's going into the powder coaters is already a good starting point. I'm also gonna take inventory of all the bolts that need changing things because it's easier to do it when the trailer's assembled. That way I can take my list to the bolt shop, the bolt man as it were, asking for all the bolts I need, ready for when I get the trailer back from powder coating to reassemble it. Golden rule, always take photos because it makes your life a lot easier. For this, I'm using an air compressed sander with a 60 grit and an 80 grit, which are coarse because I don't really need to finesse it. I just need to get rid of the surface rust on the larger components because their sandblasting chamber is only big enough for some of the smaller components. Yours is the trailer, isn't it? Yeah. That trailer, last time you gave me the trailer, it was in bits, wasn't it? That's not gonna go in our oven. Is it not? That's way too big. <laughs> the last time, obviously, we had it in parts. So we were putting on a book, come have a look, I'll show you. Okay, so a bit of an oversight and a bit of a foul. Phoenix Alloys, who I used to do my Extreme trailer, which is more of a flat pack style trailer, didn't actually inform me when I booked in the Amhole One Piece trailer that it wouldn't fit in their oven or sandblaster, so this company wasn't gonna be a goer. But more information on the company that I ended up going with will come later in the series. If you're interested in any of the tools I'm using, then the links are in the description below. So let's get into prepping this trailer. Okay, so at this point guys, annoyingly, the actual air compressor sander wasn't really doing the job that I would have hoped. The clutch and the actual mechanism of the tool just kept cutting out anytime it came up against any real resistance. So although this looks spectacular, in reality, I need to switch approach. So my next attempt was with the good old drill and the actual wire wall heads. Now this did work to an extent, but again, this is like 26 years old worth of rust, so I need something much more abrasive. We got there and the classic saying does stick, third time lucky. eventually turned out to be a simple angle grinder with really really coarse heads that was able to change. I was using these up pretty quickly because obviously the amount of rust was just eating through the actual pads themselves but the level of control that I was able to achieve with this it was almost as if there was no clutch in the actual angle grinder itself hence why I was able to just literally cut through all of this surface rust. Now again it is going to get sandblasted a lot of you guys will probably think what is the actual point in sanding it? For me anytime I do something in life I like gaining knowledge of how hard a task is or to get real world understanding of the implications of doing the task. If hypothetically sandblast wasn't something that was available to yourself, you're ultimately still gonna have to remove the rust. So I like to bring exposure to the ways in which you can actually restore some of these things without always going to just the actual commercial end of paying for the actual restoration service.
important consideration, unless you intend on replacing the whole axle, in my instance, I actually wanted to restore it, so I'm sanding off the rust because this does have to be automatically primed and sprayed because ultimately powder coating uses an oven and this has pressed rubber suspension in the inside of the barrel of the axle, so you can't put it in the oven. So ultimately, the axle does have to be conventionally sprayed, which is not ideal, but that is the reality of the powder coating process. Now, yes, you could remove the rubber inserts, but unless you've got the equipment to actually do this, for me, the suspension has no issues with it component wise in terms of the wear so it's just the actual hubs that I'm going to be restoring. Now for any eagle eyed viewers you'll notice in these next clips the trailer is actually dissembled and I've not cheated you you will see me taking it apart but that needs a video in its own right because well it was a bit of a task. <laughs> So we are six hours on and well, it was a bit of a mission. I did really, really well with most of the areas, but some of the rust just was hard to reach. It's gonna get sandblasted, so I'm not particularly concerned. However, if you were doing this for yourself, ultimately some of the areas you are gonna to have to actually sand down once the trailer's dissembled. However, the disassembly, disassembly, assembly, taking the trailer apart basically will be the next episode and that needed an episode in itself because well, that was a mission as well, but very insightful for you guys if you're trying to take a part a 26 year old trailer. So before you guys put in the comments about the galvanization effect and the fact that I'm actually technically removing the galvanization, to be honest guys, with a trailer that's 26 years old, if you wanna remove the rust, then you're gonna remove the galvanization, that's a given. Now in an ideal world, ordinarily you would get the trailer galvanized and then powder coated, but when I actually powder coated my DI trailer, I learned a lot about the implications of powder coating over the top of galvanization. It's not an exact science, although it's 2022, hopefully there would be an effective way to do this right now. There's kind of a process called the gassing out process but in all honesty it varies from different powder coat to different powder coater and no one has kind of a common consensus of exactly how you nail that sweet spot with getting rid of the actual gas particles from the galvanization itself to then powder coat over quite a lot to take in there so in essence if you're going for powder coating then you are kind of prioritizing the aesthetical looking feel of your trailer that's not to say powder coating isn't a strong finish but galvanization is ultimately the best protection against corrosion and salt water it just happens to look pretty lame on trailers. So powder coating is growing in popularity and it is getting better all the time. And I can confidently report that my DI trailer that I've used for the last two years has only got one instance where things are starting to chip a little bit, but there is powder coat repair kit. So lots of consideration. And if you really wanted to, you could get your trailer galvanized before you have it powder coated. But as I said, there's that key gassing out period, which you need to make sure you work with a supplier that has experience in this because there is a bit of a fine art to it. So as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you're enjoying this sort of mini trailer series to do with restore old trailers. My focus with these old classics is always about restoring the actual classic itself, but a lot of the time the trailers are pretty screwed that you actually get with these skis, so you do need to give them some TLC. And without going out and just buying brand new trailers all the time, hopefully this gives you a good insight as to some of the implications about actually restoring a trailer from start to finish. This channel is focused on classic jet skis, the two-stroke, the golden era, the 90s. However, I do focus on the supplementing things that go along with jet skiing, so trailers, equipment that I use, all of the things that I use that go along with with jet skiing basically so this channel is a very well-rounded channel i'd like to think and not just about you know sitting on a jet ski riding all the time i want to kind of bring exposure to the actual lifestyle part that goes with jet skiing itself so i'm hoping to bring lots more content so do the usual thing guys it helps me out hit the subscribe button i know virtually 99 percent of youtube channels always plug and say subscribe but ultimately you guys subscribing is the way that i know you like the content is the way that helps youtube basically push my videos up the algorithm and i can keep making these videos for you so if you like the content i'm making please Please hit the subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Oh, for God's sake!